Welcome back to the workshop, or my garage, same thing. Well, I got a few new things to tell you. Number one, new apron, finally. The other one was dying, literally. Like, I, I don't know how it protected me for so long. You probably already see in the back, new equipment, drill press, and most importantly, some welding equipment, because uh, can't do this project without a welder. After this project, uh, I'm probably gonna do a lot more blacksmithing stuff since I've already read the title of this video So I don't really need to explain that much. Let's get into it. These little squares I will be using to weld on the side so I can uh, add some big old bolts to keep the anvil from moving Starting off with the drill press. We're gonna put uh, a few holes into these square blocks um, And then from there we'll uh, increase the size and then weld those onto the big old piece. Always use lube when cutting. All right, I cleaned them up a bit. We're gonna be putting all this on the side of the anvil. Probably should get rid of the sharp shit here. Not very, not very safe. Wire brush. Always wear eye protection with this. This is a piece of a cut off, and I'm not sure what this green stuff is, but I'm gonna take that out. Now what you're watching here is me correctly, well, half correctly, welding some uh, those steel bits onto the side of the anvil. Now, I definitely would recommend some practice, at least maybe two hours, just so you know how to actually use the welder. Definitely look up some YouTube videos because I found a lot of helpful tips on there. Um, but what you definitely don't want to do is go in blind. Now, I got lucky these first two, but trust me, the third one took me an hour. I I was really struggling welding the third one onto the side of the anvil, which is why you're not seeing it. Now, a giant issue I had was the magnet. The magnet, uh, every single time I was trying to weld onto the side of the third one, it kept moving it. Uh, well, I kept moving it, which was kind of my fault, but whatever. You can really see me struggling here trying to actually use a damn welder because this is just after some practice. Actually, I haven't even had practice yet. So this is just me going in blind completely, only after welding, what, like a tin can, which completely melted through. Uh, I'm going to stop talking now and just want let you watch, and uh, I'll add commentary when needed. You're welcome. As you're definitely watching right now, a uh, major issue I had was the electrode actually sticking to the metal because I didn't know how to do a proper strike. I definitely recommend practicing striking off of steel so you can actually start your weld. You can worry about different kinds of welding techniques after you've learned how to do the strike. Looks great. Just kidding, looks terrible. Well, I am going to be skipping a lot of the failed welding, um, but you definitely have to check this out. I am still watching this while editing, and I am so proud of this. Check it.
Now some welders might think that is terrible, and I completely agree with you, but this is after several hours of me trying to actually use the welder. Uh, definitely doesn't seem like much, but I was happy at the time. And these welds look absolutely awful. But, um, with a bit of grinding work, I managed to get a decent finish. Sorta, if you call this decent. Now for the base. There's a big log in my backyard that fell over a while ago, and I had to dig this trench in the snow to make sure I don't slip. Here's me walking to it. Now from what I know, this log is most likely oak, which is a fairly hard wood. And luckily enough, it was rather straight. All I had to do was get my papa to come over and cut it. Now this process took quite a bit, thanks to the snow, the angle of the log, and uh ice that quite literally froze inside the log because no one has moved it since it fell over and that was back in the fall. Pretty sure you could see it in one of my old videos. We actually had to cut the other side first and then put a jack underneath it to try to lift it the log up because it was at such an angle that when you cut it, it would press against the chainsaw. The first and, well, so I thought, easiest thing to do with the log is to cut out the square that the anvil was going to rest on. Little did my dumbass know is that if it took that long with a chainsaw to cut this thing, it would take me even longer to cut it with the fucking handsaw. What are you doing? I just remembered I have a palm sander. Probably should have used that instead of the grinder, but whatever. This method turned out to not be that great after all. It still is going to take me several hours to flatten this out. Now it's time for the most time-consuming part of this build, which is stripping the outer bark of the log. It took quite a bit because, again, this log is still frozen. I haven't gotten a chance to warm it up at all. So for the next two and a half hours, I was, with a hammer and chisel, stripping the bark off of this log. This isn't completely necessary, but I did it just for looks. But I found a really neat trick on how to remove bark. If you right-click, just like in Minecraft, you strip the entire lock in an instant. And I've got to say, I am pretty proud that I managed to fit that all in around two hours. It doesn't look that great, but, well, you have to use what you got. On to the next day. All right, I'm gonna be using this jigsaw right here. See if I can hopefully get through that area I marked with a chisel. But first I'm gonna finish this epic slice of pizza. And now we were back to the back worst to the part of this. I have, I was going to have to spend another two and a half hours chiseling and making sure these lines are smooth. And uh, nice. Test fitting the anvil onto the log, it doesn't look that bad. Although one major thing I really have to make sure I fix is this giant gap.
that's definitely going to make a problem <laughs> in the future if I don't fix it now. Alright, so I sanded it down to a half decent level. It should fit pretty well on the anvil now. And uh, we can start to glue it up. I've got some fire sealant right here. Uh, this will help attach it to the log. Uh, this will also help because this is a more rubbery substance. Uh, that'll definitely help with the vibrations this is going to get. So, let's, uh, let's get some on there. Now, it does seem a bit crooked. Uh, but that's because the bottom part down there is not very straight, so we're going to attach it and make sure that the very uh, flat anvil top is going to make the bottom part a lot easier to sand down and make sure it's nice and flat. Oh, that's nice. Came out the bottom. Probably should use a cock gun for this. Go get our anvil and mount it on top. To not add any more dents than you probably already did, just <coughs> lightly tap. Or if you have a spare glove, just put it there. Makes less noise. As well, it's seeing the crack. That's uh, it's my fault. Um, yeah, I'm not the best welder out there, but we'll work with what we have. Now, normally through this point in the process, I would explain that you would have to drill a hole before adding your screw or your bolt or whatever. This is to prevent cracking inside of the wood. However, while I was doing that, two of the four screws that I decided to use snapped. And uh, I didn't want to include all that failure in the video. Mostly to save myself some embarrassment and to not waste your time. Now I'll leave it like this. Uh, the cock still needs to dry and the weight of the log should be able to keep it smushed enough so it solidifies and is completely solid. I'll uh, figure something out with those bolts later. Now because of yesterday's mishap, there are no screws in this one. Uh, I was thinking of going out and buying some, but probably another time. Uh, this video or project has already taken quite a long time. I've had this idea for several weeks, if not a month. But in case, in uh, terms of the anvil, certainly sounding a lot better than yesterday. I gave the silicone some time to harden. It is a bit cold, so I think it did freeze a bit. However, sounds good. You have around 10 by 8 inches. That's around the size I got. You can make yours bigger. You're going to need a bigger log, of course. And uh, I hope you do a much better job than I did at it. Again, I'm no professional. I'm just some kid that has a log and a big piece of metal in my backyard. So, um, all I gotta do is uh, sand down the base down here on the bottom so uh, it stops wiggling so much. And uh, we're basically done. Thank you all for watching. Um, in my next video, I'll do a forging video now that I have an anvil. Sorry I couldn't get through everything. I'm, a bit of, I'm in a bit of a time cramp with school and work and whatever. Um, hope you can understand that. And uh, here's a list of items I used. It's not too complicated. Um, it, this isn't exactly a step-by-step. -step. It's more of just a, if you want to do this, you could experiment with it. Really have to say thank you for watching to the end of this video if you are here and uh, I will see you next time. Goodbye.